frontend is complicated and things are changing all the time. Every year we get new shiny things and you start wondering what do people actually use. And especially as a beginner, things might look complicated and intimidating. But fear not, luckily since 2016 we have a yearly survey called the State of JS, which gives a really nice overview. And the newest 2022 edition just arrived. Since it's pretty lengthy and with tons of data, I'm gonna give you a quick summary, a quick TLDR. So let's hop into it. First off, let's take a look at how many people took part in the survey. This year we had almost 40,000 people, which is roughly twice as much as all the previous years. And that's great to see because this makes the results more accurate and representative. But I'm pretty sure there are more than 40,000 developers worldwide and not everyone is living in the US. So take these results with a grain of salt. Let's first take a look at JavaScript itself and browser features. Here we can see how many people are aware of certain features, which is the size of the whole circle, and the inner circle shows how many have used it. As for JavaScript, you can clearly see that knowledge coalescing is the most known and used feature. It's pretty much just using two question marks after a variable to give it a default value if it's null or undefined. On the browser side, the most widely known and used feature is WebSocket. It's an API that is available in the browser to create a two-way connection with a server to send messages back and forth, and it's great to create websites that show real-time data data like tickers or chat apps. Another interesting thing to point out is that many people seem to know WebGL but have never used it, which is a shame because it lets you render awesome 2D and 3D stuff directly in the browser and can spice up your website. Then there are other features such as progressive web apps, which are websites that also function as mobile apps using the same code base. They are well known and used, unlike WebAssembly, which makes it possible to create web applications using other languages than HTML and JavaScript, such as C++ or or C Sharp. Since it came out in 2019 it's been on the rise, but the adoption seems to have slowed down a little bit. Alright, now let's get to the juicy part, and what you're probably here for, the framework wars. In this visually painful chart you can see all kinds of frameworks and libraries in three dimensions. We have whether people like them or not, how much they use them or not use them, plus how all of that changed over time. Let's inspect some of them. First, we have React, which is obviously the most used front-end framework, uh, I mean library, and is fairly far on the positive side. However, as you can see, as it gets more popular, the satisfaction goes down, which is a phenomenon that you can observe often as a framework gets more mature. You can argue it's a good thing, because people are using it more and can see its flaws in edge cases for example, which leads to a more balanced opinion. Although by that logic, if we take a look at Angular, you can argue it's absolutely hated or very mature. Take your pick. Similar thing with Vue, which was everyone's favorite baby for a few years until it started to mature. Vue 3 came out, adoption slowed down, and satisfaction started dropping slowly. These days everyone's favorite baby is Svelte. As you can see, it's on the rise and going in the right direction on both axes. Then we also have Embers.js, which is heading towards its grave, and Electron, which is used to build Windows and Mac native apps using JavaScript, also losing in popularity. Maybe people don't like having apps wait 90 percent more than they have to. I'm just kidding, I'm not here to judge. All of them have their upsides and downsides. On a positive note, going back to React, its meta framework Next.js is still on the rise with increasing adoption and satisfaction. Even after the release of Next 13 with a lot of big changes. Either people love it or didn't use it enough yet to hate it. We might see the result of this next year. Now let's take a closer look at front-end frameworks. Here you can see how over time the usage of all these different frameworks changed. As always, React sits on its throne at around 80% usage. But what is interesting is the fact that Angular and Vue are closer together than ever. However, both saw a decline from the previous year. At the same time, we see smaller frameworks such as Svelte or SolidJS rise and new competitors entering the ring, such as Quick. And if we look at interest, these new frameworks are clearly at the top. And when asked if they would use the framework again, these are again at the very top. That's either the new shiny thing syndrome, or can indicate that we are slowly seeing a shift in front-end. And more people are realizing that maybe there are better ways to create a website than with established frameworks such as React, at least in certain cases. Same thing with rendered frameworks. Next.js, which is for React, is a clear winner when it comes to usage. But people are getting more interested in the new kit on the block, which is Astro and SvelteKit, and would also use them again, which means high satisfaction. When it comes to building mobile and desktop apps with JavaScript, there are no clear winners. Electron and React Native share the throne, but are not far ahead of Cordava or Ionic. However, the fairly new framework Tauri seems to be on the rise and is getting popular. And last but not least, as for build tools, Webpack is at the top as always, whether you like it or not. I assume probably not. 
However, what I'm sure most people love to see is the rise of Veet. Yes, it's not pronounced Veit, but Veet which is a front-end build tool developed by Even Yu, who is also the creator of Vue.js. It's fairly new, but sees a lot of popularity for its performance and ease of use. Now, here are some other cool things to take away from the survey. TypeScript is used a lot compared to vanilla JavaScript, as you can see here. And JavaScript is used quite a bit for building backends, as well as mobile apps and desktop apps. But on the flip side, people are increasingly stating that building JavaScript apps is overly complex right now, and that the ecosystem is changing too fast, understandably. The last thing I want to mention is the resource category, which has a section of the most followed creators. My goal is to be on the list next year, because as we know, it's a popularity contest, and the only thing that matters is to be higher than Ben Awood. So let's see if we can do that. It would be a dream come true, that is only possible with your help. Anyway, enough of begging, that's it for this video, I hope you found it informative and enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.